to have Jesus come back? Five of you do. Praise the Lord. If Jesus came back today, it'd solve a lot of my problems. Yeah. <clears throat> she was saying if Jesus came back for me today, it'd solve all of her problems. That's what she was saying. I got that. It is so good to have have you here today. Look, turn your Bibles. We're going to be looking at Matthew 28 and Acts chapter 1. And uh, again, it is good to have have you here with us. I wanted to share a few pictures. I shared a little bit last week. I want to share a few pictures of what Africa was like. This was a picture there on the compound of uh, of, uh, of a building that was there by the side and pretty tropical looking. It was a beautiful place. Pretty hot. It's about like Houston in August. But uh, go to the next one. I. It, have you ever been a part of one of those things where you're adopting this kid from overseas and you don't know if they actually exist or not? Is the money even going there? My wife and I have been sponsoring Shadrach for four years now. And, uh, um, and so it's nice to actually go someplace and meet the kid that we've been, we've been sending money on his behalf uh, uh, for four years. And we actually got to meet him. And when I got over there, he was wearing this shirt and uh, uh, he didn't know I was coming. He's never met me. We've never, I've never even exchanged letters uh, in all that time. And I show up, and there he is wearing a Texas shirt. It says Austin on there. And I'm like, hey, you don't know, but I'm from right there, man. That you, you, you got my hometown plastered all over you. It was a privilege and an honor to get to minister to him and share Jesus with him. And, uh, and he accepted the Lord as his Savior. Go that next one there, brother. Hallelujah. Another soul converted. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You made that worth my while, brother. I, those, those eyes rolled so far back, the whole head went back. Uh, Mm. I did that for y'all. I want you to know this. I did that for y'all. Because I really like that shirt, but I said, you know what? I would rather have this picture than that shirt. So, But no, Shadrach's a good kid. It was it was awesome to be with him. Go to the next one if you would. There's a, a different kind of a mash of pictures there. The little compound where we're at, people were lining up for, for not just hours. Sometimes they were lining up the day before just to get medical treatment. And uh, they're, they're laying out on the ground, sleeping in chairs, uh, just because they're in such desperate need. Uh, pictures of us as they're going through with nurses and uh, some surgeries. We did have surgeries. Somebody asked, Brother Mike, what on earth did you put on Facebook that Facebook blocked? Well, it was that little surgery picture right there. A little bit of blood, you know. Got a, Facebook's got to ban it. You can put all kinds of other provocative stuff on Facebook, and they're okay with that. A little bit of blood, oh my, can't have that. But, you know, Facebook is what it is. So uh, a lot of medical uh, things. Matter of fact, what I said last Sunday was the surgery team, it was another town, they did as many surgeries in one week as the hospital they were at does in an entire year. They were just putting them through there. And uh, they were their doctors and nurses were getting to watch our team go through it. And, and, and it's like a once-in-a-lifetime event for some of these. Our personal uh, clinic we were at, we had almost a thousand people come through in uh, in about ten days worth of clinical trial, and uh, so we're seeing a physician's assistant uh, receiving uh, drugs of different kind. A lot of it's malaria issues and uh, uh, blood pressure, uh, all kinds of other things, and uh, uh, so we're and then we get to counsel with them at the end and even try to lead them to Jesus, give them an opportunity to know the Lord as their Savior. And so, uh, I think the very last day, uh, how many, any nurses, medical people here? Okay. So that last day, we saw 130 patients from, from 7 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. I mean, that's a ton of people. And uh, so, 
that was a, an, a very wearing out but wonderful experience. The uh, this was a school that they have there where I was at in Liberia. It's called Hope Village. Uh, Bridges of Hope Ministry. So they have a school right there, and then we do the clinics, and uh, and then they've also started a church. This is part of the students. I thought that was all the students there were. School started in 2007. It started with a handful of kids and now has like 490 kids from kindergarten through 12th grade. Hallelujah. I started thinking about that, Becky. That's about as many people we had in Florence High School or Florence Independent School District back in the day. So there you go. There, there was us. You know that next one there. This was just loving on the kids. Uh, uh, you're so tempted to grab a kid, throw them in the luggage, and take them home with you. They were wonderful and uh, uh, enjoyed enjoyed just being with them. And I'm not a kid person. I, if I can't beat them, I don't want them. But I really, really enjoyed these kids. And uh, uh, they, they enjoyed playing with an angry white guy. It was, we all had fun. We all had fun. But uh, the next one is, is these are uh, uh, pastors that I got to work with. Uh, the, the one on the left-hand side uh, is Pastor Mike, who pastors the church. I mentioned that last week. And then his associate, Pastor Ben. And uh, I thought, well, this is fortuitous. This is of God because Mike and Ben, Mike and Ben, we're doing pretty good here. Uh, matter of fact, that center picture, I was getting to preach, and uh, he was Pastor Mike the first, and I was Pastor Mike the second. And uh, that's how, that's literally what they called me the entire time. I was there. Pastor Mike two, Pastor Mike two. Yes, that's that's me. And uh, uh, they gave us they gave us some African shirts, and uh, it's pretty unusual. I enjoyed it. Felt like I was in Cuba or something, but. Uh, Felt so pretty good. Go to that next one. This is pastors. How do you remember we gave away some Bibles here a while back? Those little uh, brown chronological gospels. Remember that we gave those away? So I took a handful of those chronological gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all put in one seamless storyline. I took that to a handful of pastors, and those first, those are pictures of them holding those books. Those pastors were so proud to receive those. They said some of our pastors don't even have a Bible. And they were begging. They're saying, please, can you, uh, uh, can you come back and give us training? We, need, we want training. We need materials. We need anything we can have to help us do a, do a better job of this. These were pastors. We would gather together every morning and we would pray before we saw the people, the, the patients coming through. And uh, this, is, uh, this next one is... Uh, a whole bunch of the pastors, and um, and they're saying, please, can you got to be careful with some missions things because it's like, hey, you're the great American church that gives lots of money. Have you know you can't throw money at every problem? They're saying we don't need money. What we need is help. We need training. We need we need to know how to do a better job. And uh, um, and so I was very very touched to move by that. Uh, with this group of people there in Liberia. So I want to say thank you uh, to you as a church. Thank you for letting me go. Amen. Thank you for letting me go. And and uh, you don't know it, but the board, there was, a, there was a small amount that was left over of my trip fee, and the board actually covered that for me. Thank you uh, for sending me to represent you in Africa. My desire is to eventually get you some out, some of you out of Central Texas and out there, and get some of that foreign dirt on your feet. Now, those of you in the army say I've had enough overseas. All right, so I'm not worried about you, but some some of y'all need to some of y'all need to get out there and get your hands dirty for Jesus, and hopefully, I can help you make that happen. As Jesus was leaving for heaven to make room for the Holy Spirit to take dominion over the earth. Jesus gave us some instructions regarding our lives and our duty to the kingdom. We find this in Matthew chapter 28. This morning I actually have this in the King James Version and uh, uh, just because I like three words. I really like three words in this. Jesus said as He's about to go up, He said, All power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. He did not say, Stay home. He said, go ye therefore 
and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. There's another reference that's kind of tied in with it that you see from uh, when Luke writes the book of Acts. We find this in Acts chapter 1. And Jesus tells His disciples, says, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let me, let me give it to you in this kind of an illustration. Think of it as, as the concentric rings of a bullseye. You will share the word in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the other most parts of the world. It starts at the center and then it works its way out. Now as Jesus left and He placed the responsibility of evangelism, telling people about uh, the Lord and, the, and, and really the founding of this new church, Jesus put that in the hands of a bunch of men. I was waiting for a woman. I was waiting for a woman to say, oh no. Yesterday, my wife and I, we were at the Meridale School, our, our, our campus in Liberty Hill, and uh, we were doing service out there, and we were playing a game with the students, and uh, we had two sets of girls and two sets of guys, gave them a roll of toilet paper, and they had to mummy each other up. So I did the guys first, and it was a fiasco. It was terrible. They kept ripping the toilet paper. It didn't help. It was one ply. That stuff rips anyway. But they're... they're they're trying to get it done, and all the girls, you got like seven boys and about 500 girls over here. And these seven boys are trying to wrap them up, and these girls are like, oh, this is terrible. Oh, y'all are worthless. And I said, how many of you girls think you could do a better job? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do a better job. They were pathetic. <laughs> so it's just like a woman, Paul, to say, oh, look at my, No. The, the thing is, is God put the church in the hands of fallible people. Are you hearing me? We're God's plan A. Look at the person sitting next to you and realize that's God's plan A for the church. Heaven help us. But that's what God did. And these were the instructions that Jesus gave everybody. Everybody that lives for God is to follow these instructions. You're to reach every nation with the gospel. Every nation. You're to create uh, growing disciples that are making disciples, that are making disciples. God doesn't want us making converts. He wants us making disciples. Students, followers, leaders, people that have initiative. We're to teach obedience to the teachings of Jesus and Scripture. We're supposed to start at home in our own Jerusalem. I mean, you know, this is our Jerusalem. And it goes out from there and, and all the way to the farthest parts of the planet. And we do this with the power of God in us and the knowledge of His presence. I'm not alone. I was over there in Africa and, and I'm not alone. I was in the middle of the capital, thousands and thousands of people. And I was not alone because Jesus Christ was right there with me. And I couldn't help but look around at all these people and hear God say, I love them and them and them and them and them and them and them. I saw people going by. They, had, they didn't know the treasure they had. They were wearing Texas A&M shirts. Literally saw it the one time, the one time I did see a University of Texas person. They, they, were, they, they were wearing a sweatshirt in the summer. Makes sense. <laughs> Eyes were all beady, sweaty, homeless looking. I mean, if there was a meth head in Liberia, Africa, that's what they looked like. I wanted so bad to get a picture. I really did. And just, just say, man... We need to help them. <laughs> They're not representing UT very well. I'm just saying. They weren't doing it. This is the mission statement of the church. When Jesus said, Go ye therefore. It's the mission statement of every church, including Maxdale Cowboy Church. The missionary mandate is something we've got to fulfill. Well, here we go. Pastor Mike went on a missions trip, so he's all fired up about missions. No, I'm fired up about souls. 
I want to see people want Jesus right here. Especially when I drive in Colleen. I want to, I want to help people meet Jesus when I'm there. Now I'll tell you in the last year, because coming up here in a couple of weeks, my wife and I will celebrate our one year anniversary as your pastors. And I've been pleasantly surprised just watching this church and being a part of this church. This church does local missions excellently. I, I talked to some of my friends. Yeah, we're involved in missions. We got a rodeo and a stock show. And they look at me like, that, that's not missions. I was like, man, we're all up in that stuff. And we got things set aside where we're telling people about Jesus at the rodeo. We're telling people about Jesus at the stock show. How many know if you're going to be a cowboy church, you better be involved in some cowboy things? I'm just saying. I love that we're involved with Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Florence. Some of us are there on a weekly basis telling these students about Jesus Christ. I value that we're part of HARP, helping with the Colleen School District and food assistance during the holidays. We got a new parable in the park uh, uh, moment that's coming up pretty quick. Clothing ministry. Even when the chuck wagon goes out there sharing Jesus. We got, we got all kinds of avenues here. And I'm telling you right now, for a church, for a local church, rural church, doing local missions, I'm telling you, this is probably the best I've ever seen. Ever. This church does a fantastic job. I'm bragging on you. You're doing a good job. Here's the thing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Now while I value what we're doing, I'd like to stretch your imaginations for a couple more minutes to the ends of the earth. What do the ends of the earth look like? I'm not talking about Nolanville. <laughs> while that does look like the ends of the earth, Gatesville. Let's let's branch out a little bit further. There's an old statement I used to hear <coughs> pastoring when I was in the assemblies of God. They made this statement that said, the light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. If you stood at the base of a lighthouse like that and you'd see that light beam going way out there, it would be well illuminated right here. I'm proud to say we, uh, we do some good illumination right here. And I would love to see even more illumination happen right here in our own Jerusalem. But that light has got to shine far. Winston Churchill is best remembered as the British Prime Minister whose speeches rallied a nation against a relentless Nazi onslaught that was, a, that was coming against England and that part of the world in World War II. How many of you knew that he was actually a Nobel uh, Prize winner in literature? I didn't know that. And it was mainly because of his speeches. His speeches were that good. And on February the 9th of 1941, Winston Churchill made a speech broadcast uh, to the nation over radio and television about the current state of the war. And in his remarks... Uh, he was talking about the results of the recent presidential election in America. Uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt had just won his unprecedented third term of office. And, uh, and after his victory, the president sent a couple uh, emissaries over to England just to say, what, how can we help you? We've got this war going on. We'd rather fight the war in your yard than wait for it to get into our yard. So how can we help? And this was Churchill's response. What is the answer that I shall give in your name to this great man, the thrice chosen head of a nation of 130 million? Here is the answer which I will give to President Roosevelt. Put your confidence in us. Give us your faith and your blessing. And under providence, all will be well. We will not fail or falter. We will not weaken or tire. Neither the sudden shock of battle nor the long drawn trials of vigilance and exertion will wear us down. Give us the tools and we will finish the job. Give us the tools and we will finish the job. And with the right tools, the Nazi regime was thwarted and the righteous cause did prevail in that day and time. How do you know there's been another war going on all along? It's, it's been happening since the Garden of Eden and just prior. 
And it's one for the souls of men. For the souls of all mankind. Jesus drafted us, you, me, if you call yourself a child of God, you've been conscripted into this war and most people don't have any clue about it. And we have the commands that He gave us as He was leaving. Go ye therefore. Nobody's coming from another world to tell people about the salvation found in Jesus Christ. God left that into your hands and my hands. Henry Martin, one of the great missionaries of years past, said the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of missions. And the nearer we get to Him, the more intensely missionary we must become. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of missions. And the closer we get to Jesus, the more this has got to burn inside of us. And that's not just talking about Africa or China. That's talking about everywhere around us. The people you're going to bump into today at the restaurant. The people you're going to bump into, you go to the store. Some of your own family members you may rub shoulders with. They need to know Jesus. And nobody from Liberia, Africa is coming over here as missionaries. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is our job. This is what we're called to do. This is what we're called to do. The early church through the Apostle Paul, they gave funds to help with this missionary process as Paul traveled all these foreign lands around him while at the same time he was planting churches locally. He was doing stuff here. He was doing stuff out there. And he began to incorporate people saying, hey, come and go with me. Hey, you come and go with me. You come and go with me. At one point he said, no, you stay here. <laughs> I'm tired of you. You come and go with me. You come and go with me. He, I loved how Paul incorporated people into the process. Go with me. I can't go with you. Fine. Give something. Because everybody can do a part. Everybody can do something to reach souls. Our challenge before us today is this. What can you give to help make things happen? I will not apologize. If I can drag that last red cent out of your cold, miserly fingers on behalf of reaching somebody with Jesus Christ. I'll do it. You will pinch that nickel till the buffalo squeals. But I'll drag it out and give it to the missions process. Why? Because I'm all about souls. I can't take gold with me to heaven. That's asphalt. I can't take pearls with me. That's the doors. <laughs> But you know what I can take? Souls. I want you to be able... Man, for all Ray Boltz's issues, I would tell you one of the greatest things was that song, Thank You. One by one they came, far as the eye could see. Somehow their life was touched by, by you and your service and what you did. Hmm. It's not only what can you give, it's are you willing to use your talents and availability to make a difference? I'm talking to the directors over there at Bridges of Hope in Liberia. They've got this school, but they can't, they can't facilitate all the children if they had to put them in one place. They've got a church that they've started, <clears throat> but at the very most, it'll hold this row of chairs right here. Have you know this church couldn't fit in that building? They need something like this. They build it out of concrete blocks. How do you know how to lay concrete block? <laughs> Don't you shake your head at me, young man. <laughs> do you know there's things we can do if we have the talent or we have the treasure. But there's something we can do to help make a difference. Not just in Liberia, Africa but maybe in Liberty Hill, Texas. As we continue our local outreaches to help, and hopefully we're going to create some new ones this year. I'd love to, I'm all about new ministry. 
If it's not illegal or immoral, let's try something. I'd rather try something than not do anything. I used to say illegal, immoral, or fattening, but we don't say that one anymore. But I'm also looking to work and establish new works for us in faraway places. I want us to be invested in something bigger than us. I sent a picture to my youth pastor I grew up with, David Johnson, pastors in the Brethren Church in Cameron, uh, Caldwell, Texas. I sent him a picture of me preaching in Africa and told him, I've got African pastors that are begging for me to come back there. Me. Just me. Nothing special. Vanilla. Plenty of you have reminded me of that. And they're saying, please, whatever you can do to help us, we need help. And I sent that to my youth pastor. And, uh, and I said, your fingerprints are all over this. Every soul I might be able to touch in Africa is because of what you poured into my life. I want to be able to show pictures of people getting saved, things happening, and saying, you help make this happen. How many you would love to see Florence have a revival, a spiritual revival take place on the campus. I would love to see that. Amen. Start somewhere. So let me end with this. Some of us can't do all of it, but all of us can do some of it. We can all do something. And I'm going to ask, will you allow God to stir your heart to service? Will you allow God to stir your heart so that you can give to a missionary process. If you can't go and do it, if you can go and do it, I want to take you. If you can do it here, because how many you know, you can do a construction project here, and it's a missions project. Matter of fact, we've got one. If, if uh, Bubba was here today, uh, the cowpokes, got a, they've got a, a project that they're trying to do. Because how many you know, when you help somebody that needs help, you're doing it for Jesus Christ. I would love, love, love to put the tools in your hand and go do it. But if you can't do it, would you help me do whatever we can to put the tools in their hands so they can do the job? I want you to bow your heads with me right now. now Father God, I want to say thank you for this day and this moment that we have. I thank you that this is a church that's not only been called to the missionary and evangelistic process, but Lord, I thank you this is a church that's already involved in it. God, I am a proud pastor. And what I ask, Lord God, is that you would help us to search our hearts and minds and know for a fact within ourselves we're doing everything we can. We're doing our part. Father, if there's more we can do, help us to do it. If there's something we can give, help us to give it. Otherwise, Lord Jesus, use our hands. Use our feet. Help us to preach a sermon at all times and if necessary, use words. Let our life, Lord God, show Jesus to this dark world. Father, I pray, help us to have the heart that says everybody needs to know. I want to ask our ushers to come right now if they would. I want us to receive a missions offering. I don't think this is something that's been done very often, but something I would like to do I'm one of those that just believes if you talk about it but never do anything, you'll never get anywhere. This is where I'd like to start. If you got a check, may just make it payable to the church and, and uh, just put missions in the corner. If you need an envelope, tell one of these guys they can probably go get you one. If you say, Brother Mike, I don't have anything with me but I'd like to give. Tell you what, if you'll 
give something, put it in an envelope and just mark missions on it. And then when we get ready to do a project, I'm going to tell you exactly what we're doing with this money. Right now, it looks like what we're really going to focus on is there are some pastors that need some help telling people about Jesus. And I would really like to help these pastors. So Father, I pray right now. It's not about giving the same amount of money as much as it is the same amount of sacrifice. And Father, as people give their tithe, Lord, I thank you for the giving of tithe. This is not that. This is above our tithe, Lord. And I would pray that you would bless every gift, every giver, and use it for the building of your kingdom. And Father, I would pray that as we are part of the missions process, Lord Jesus, help us to be excited about what you're doing. And God, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. As